CATL, the biggest battery company in the world, they've just unveiled their commercial battery, buses, trucks, machinery, etc. It has up to 500 kilometers of range. Range is not a standout feature. Energy density is 175 watt hours per kilogram. But there are some interesting numbers here that we hadn't seen before. And it puts paid to the whole agenda of Sky News and other mainstream media saying batteries don't last because batteries are now guaranteed. Now keep in mind, these are the kind of battery cells that Cadle are using in some of the biggest battery projects around the world. Mega batteries being built in California, mega batteries being built in Australia, mega batteries being built in China, in Europe. They now are guaranteed for around 20 years. Minimum, that's the warranty. That's not the expected lifespan, which is much longer than that. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. I want to say a big thank you to, to all of you for supporting the channel. If you'd like to become a YouTube member, I'll put a link in the description below. Cadle's new battery, right? It It is, um, it's not a battery intended for you know, supercars or very long range vehicles. This is a commercial level battery. What's interesting is this battery for commercial purposes, whether that's machinery, trucks, etc., it has a 15 year guarantee. And they say that after 15 years, it's guaranteed to have 80% of its original capacity after 15 years. What is the lifespan? Well, the lifespan is 3 million kilometers. Now, these are the kind of batteries that we will see in electric cars within the next five years, right? Three million kilometers. BYD themselves also, say, they're saying similar things. BYD is saying their new Blade battery version two, not only does it have much higher energy density and much faster charging, it also will last much longer than the existing, today's BYD Blade battery, which is used in BYD cars, Tesla Model Ys built in Germany. So one of the biggest changes here, the biggest improvements, is discharging and charging. These batteries ability to deal with fast discharging and fast charging. This is kind of an area that battery companies have been working on to improve their batteries and enable them to, to do things like what Tesla was promising, which was the million mile battery. So a three million kilometer lifespan battery. Now imagine if you bought an electric car, how long would it take you to do three million kilometers? Let's say you did insane mileage. Let's say you did 100,000 kilometers a year. I don't think anyone does that, but let's say you actually did. It would take you 30 years of driving, 30 years of driving to essentially get through the, the use case, the use, the lifespan of these batteries. Now imagine owning a truck. Imagine owning a business that requires batteries to last a long time, requires a product to last a long time, but trucks don't last a long time. They have to rebuild their engines after a few hundred thousand miles, rebuild the entire engine. However, the advantage of having now an electric semi or electric truck or electric machinery is so enormous when you consider the lifespan Trucks don't last that long. They need enormous amounts of money to keep them on the road and they're expensive to run. Think of all the diesel fuel they, they cost. But now with 1.2 megawatt charging speeds, there is really no negative to having an electric truck. There's only upside. 3 million kilometers means that a truck now would last at least five times as long if it's electric versus diesel. The CEO of the biggest battery company in the world said that the 4680 battery cell is doomed to fail and will never be successful. The CEO of Cadle, CATL, the world's biggest battery company, Robin Denholm, he's, he's come out and said some, some very interesting things that I don't know if this is gonna turn out well for them. I mean, I think Elon Musk, I think he's gonna be pretty unhappy about these comments. 4680 battery cell. The biggest battery company in the world says it's destined to fail. And basically they've outlined the reasons why it won't succeed. Now let's have a look at those reasons. And then I'm going to tell you what I think. I mean, yes, I'm not a battery engineer, but sometimes the reason a battery succeeds is not necessarily because it has the best chemistry 
or is the fastest pr to produce. There's other geopolitical factors that can come into play. And that's something that sometimes I've found in dealing with the Chinese. They don't always consider. There is a little bit of arrogance in China. There's no mistake to say that. I think that's true. And you'll find a lot of journalists will actually say the same thing. So even though Cable are the biggest battery company in the world, that doesn't mean their CEO is immune from potentially a little bit of hubris. And that could be what's coming across here. But let's look at what he said. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. If you can support us on Patreon, that would be great. I'll put a link in the description below. That does keep the, the channel going. In a conversation uh, not that long ago, uh, the, the chairman, or basically the CEO of Cadle, the biggest battery company in the world, who the Chinese government are concerned have a monopoly. When the Chinese government makes a comment like that, you've got to be worried. That's what they said about Alibaba. What do you know? What happens to Alibaba? The company was split into pieces. Yeah. This could happen to Cadle. So if you're invested in Cadle, I'd be very concerned. That's a possibility. Now, keep in mind, that's to the Chinese. It's very hard to invest in Cadle um, if you're located outside of China. You can invest in BYD, you can invest in other companies, but Cadle, C-A-T-L, very difficult to do so. But I still warn people that if they are invested, the Chinese government has issued, sent, made some pretty stern comments about them and they are scared of their dominance. But that tells you how successful they are as well, doesn't it? Apparently, there was a meeting with the CEO of Cadle and Elon Musk in Beijing. This was in April, but essentially we didn't know what happened during that meeting. Now we know what actually happened. Here's what happened. The CEO of Cadle and Musk got into a big debate. We had a very big debate, he said, and I showed him. He was silent. He doesn't know how to make a battery. It's about electrochemistry. He's good for the chips, the software, the hardware, the mechanical things. Now, keep in mind, Robin Denholm, he is a battery expert and that's his background. So Musk is, you know, he's good at doing lots of different things, but you can't really say Musk is a battery expert. That's not his background. He understands them. I'm sure I'm pretty confident that um, this was a mistranslation. I don't think it's true to say he doesn't understand the electrochemistry, but maybe there's a lot more going on here. Now in September, Tesla said it had produced 100 million 4680 battery cells after reaching 50 million units in June. So Tesla are clearly building a lot more 4680 battery cells, but Cadle believes that the 4680 battery cell is destined to fail. Keep in mind, Cadle doesn't primarily use cylindrical battery cells like Tesla does. They use prismatic cells. So most of Cadle's batteries are prismatic batteries, LFP batteries, for example. Even the Chillin 2.0 battery, which is one of the highest energy density NCM batteries in the world, that's not a cylindrical battery cell. Now, interestingly, aside from the battery issue, CATL believe Tesla's approach to full self-driving makes the most sense and it's the most logical decision. That's what they claim anyway. Here's what Zhang said. He's all in. I think it's a good direction with full self-driving. But when it comes back to the batteries, he says that his problem is over-promising. I talked to him. Maybe something needs five years, but he says two years. I definitely asked him why. He told me he wants to push people to get things done. 